Lever Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap that gives you a wonderful new kind of suds, presents... Our friend, Swan. With my friend, Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgot. Theirs will still be hot. My friend Irma. Well, this is the end of the year, and the end of the year is the time to take inventory. Now, let's see. My name, Jane Stacy. Assets, normal intelligence, a fair figure, passable appearance, and a $50 a week job. Liabilities, still single. <laughs> Item number two, name Irma Peterson. Assets, cute face, blonde hair, trim figure. Liabilities, one vacuum inside of her head. <laughs> Now, understand me, I love Irma Peterson. She's the sweetest kid I've ever met, but there are times when... Well, for instance, the other night we were preparing dinner, Irma was peeling onions, and the tears were streaming down her cheeks. So I said, honey... Uh, yes, Jane? Look, I, I read once that if you peel onions underwater, it won't affect your eyes. Why don't you try it? Oh, I can't, Jane. I just had my hair waved, and there's a hole in my bathing cap. <laughs> Well, now you know why I hope the new year will be different. In fact, we're just a few hours away from it. Irma and I are sitting in our little room discussing our New Year's Eve plans. Oh, Jane. Yeah? You know, as the year slips away, I realize more and more how lucky I am to have a fellow like Al. Lucky? For the man who hasn't worked in five years? Oh, it's not that. It's just that Al is so sweet. He never forgets me on holidays. He's, oh, he's so reliable. Why, his very name, Al... A-L stands for always loyal. <laughs> Frankly, I think it stands for avoid labor. <laughs> what time are you expecting that pause that depresses? <laughs> oh, Al will be here before midnight. He said he was going to get up early today. <laughs> we have great plans for tonight. Really? Where are you going? Nowhere. <laughs> Come again? We're sitting in. Uh, Al is bringing the refreshments, and, and as soon as we run out of one bottle, he's going to get another. You know you can get all the Cokes you want these days? <laughs> Why, that cheapskate. Jane, I don't think it's nice of you to say that. After all, he's coming here to see me. Richard hasn't even called yet. Well, I haven't called him. I mean, I mean, uh, well, I, 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 I don't want to go out. But at least he could have called you. Oh, well, uh, it wouldn't faze me one bit, really, it wouldn't I? I think only idiots go out on New Year's Eve. Well, Al, are in. <laughs> uh, I, I don't see why Richard Please, wouldn't... Irma, as far as Richard is concerned, really, I... I uh, well, I have a headache. Oh, I'm sorry, Jane. Well, then you wouldn't have any fun if you did go out. No, no, I wouldn't think of it. New Year's Eve means absolutely nothing to me. Nothing at all. I, I, I'd, I'd much rather just... Hello? Uh, yes, Richard. Oh, uh, no, Jane doesn't want to go out. She has a headache. Goodbye. Give me that phone! Oh, you hung up. Oh, Irma, how could you? But you had a headache. It went away. <laughs> Gee, sometimes a fellow's voice is so much better than an aspirin. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Richard. Oh, Richard, this is Jane. What? No, no, I, I never felt better. Headache? No, 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 Irma has the headache. <laughs> yeah, she, she got kind of confused, you know... You take me where? Oh, that'd be wonderful. Well, I know it's short notice, but I have practically nothing to do to get ready, and I'll be waiting. Okay, Richard. Bye. Oh, Irma, Richard's taking me out. But you said you didn't want to go. Well, uh, uh, well what could I do? Didn't you see how long he begged me? <laughs> but he hardly spoke to you. Well, he begs very fast. <laughs> oh, and look at the time, and I looked like a mess. Yes, your hair needs doing. Oh, it sure does, and I haven't got a thing to wear. Well, Richard will understand. No, Irma, no. This is 1948. It's leap year, and I've made up my mind I'm not going to let Richard forget it for one minute. I'm going to see to it that my looks leap at him and my, my clothes leap at him, my personality leaps at him. 
Oh, well, I began a dress. Yes, that's it, a dress, a dress. Let me think now. Oh, Irma, do you, do you think you could lower the hemline on my black dress? Well, sure, Jane, I do my own. Oh, good, sweetie. Now my hair. Oh, where could I find a beauty parlor open on New Year's Eve? It's just hopeless. Well, well Jane, I could do your hair. Do you think you could? Certainly I do my own, and you know all my friends say that I have a head that is very unusual. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I have no choice. Come in. Only me, Professor Kropotsky. Oh. <laughs> Happy New Year, girls. And may the years to come find you as sweet and pretty as the two of you are. Thank you, Professor. And may the years make you pretty, too. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm a seriously, Professor Irma, and I hope that the new year brings you health and prosperity and, and a more decent room to live in. <coughs> Thank you, girls. But let's not talk about my room. I already made a resolution. No more complaining to Mrs. O'Reilly. No more saying the room looks like a stable. No more will I nail a sign on my door, condemned. <laughs> 1948 is going to be different. But what about paying the rent? How many resolutions can a man make? <laughs> oh, my goodness, look at the time. P Professor, I, I don't want to seem rude or anything, but Richard's taking me out and I've got to wash my hair. Irma, will you get started on that dress? All right, Jane, leave it to me. So Richard is taking her out. That's nice. Irma, where is Al taking you? We're staying home, and I'm glad. Why? Well, you know how crowded nightclubs are. They make you sit in a corner, and next thing you know, someone puts one of those silly pointed hats on your head and always makes me feel I'm back in school again. <laughs> and I'm too grown up for that. I know what you mean. Uh, how tall are you, Professor? Yeah, five feet five. Why? Well, Jane wants me to let the hem down on this dress, and I want to get it even all around. Would Would you mind putting it on? <laughs> it's a little embarrassing, but if it'll help you, all right. Oh, that's well. Here, now, let's slip it on. All right. Uh, pull your stomach in, Professor. No use. Comes out in back. <laughs> uh, just inhale. There now. Now it's on. <laughs> What's so funny? You look cute. <laughs> I did. How do you like that? The old professor is a classy dresser. <laughs> now let me see. Uh, two inches. Two and a half. You know, Irma, now that I got the dress on, I just remembered my poor old mother always wanted a girl. <laughs> Gee, if she could just see you now. Well, she'd be a little frightened, the daughter with the beard. <laughs> How is coming out then? Oh, fine, Professor. Come in. Hiya, chicken. And you too, madam. <laughs> Don't be a wise guy. <laughs> oh, it's you, Professor. Get a dance? You come one step near me and believe oh, me. Oh, please, Al, honey. Don't tease the Professor. He's being very kind. I'm fixing this dress for Jane. Huh? How does it look? Uh, dress don't look bad, but the model needs a veil. <laughs> Emma, will you finish already? Well, in a, in a minute, Professor. I'm pinning it up. Yeah. Let me take this minute to say Happy New Year to the two of you. Here, Chicken, here's a big kiss. Oh, well, I, I want the kiss, but it isn't midnight yet. Don't worry, Chicken. I always carry a spare. <laughs> there. Now you, Professor. Al! Oh, sorry, Professor. The dress threw me. <laughs> we'll just shake hands. Happy New Year, Professor. Same to you, Elma. Elma, please. All right, it's pinned. Now, now let's take it off. Gladly. <clears throat> now, if you excuse me, I got to take my hat and coat and run. Well, what's your hurry? It's midnight. Uh, Miss O'Reilly gets a little mellow at midnight, and she wants to give me a kiss, and I can't think of a worse way to start the New Year. Goodbye. <laughs> Irma? Irma? Uh, yes, Jane? Are you coming with the dress, honey? Oh, fine, Jane. Uh, Al's here. Oh, Happy New Year, Al. Happy New Year, Jane. My hair's almost dry. I'll be out soon. All right, Jane. I I'll set it when you're ready. You doing Jane's hair, chicken? Yes, there was no time to get to a beauty parlor, and Richard is taking her out. Jane wants to look her best so she'll make a hit with him. Chicken, I just got an idea. Well, what is it, Al? It breaks my heart to see Jane and Richard break up. Well, how do you know they'll break up? Oh, it's in the cards. The dame's got no glamour. What do you mean? Well, look, I'll explain it to you, honey. Remember that picture we saw with Gregory Peck? Who is he making love to? Uh, Lana Turner. That's right. A blonde. And that Wednesday night, who was Tyrone Power making love to? Why, Betty Grable. That's right. Another blonde. Oh, well, that's silly. Olivia de Havilland is a brunette. Well, why do you think she's always crying? 
<laughs> Did you ever see what happens to the men in her pictures? They either kill themselves or leave the country. Oh, you mean that expression, gentlemen prefer blondes, is really true? Well, chicken, you don't have to look any further. What are you? A blonde. And what am I? A gentleman. Who do I prefer? Me. That's what I say, gentlemen prefer blondes. <laughs> now, look, chicken, you want to see Jane married, don't you? Oh, sure. Worse than myself. Well, then you got to help her. Well, how, Al? Well, you're going to do her hair. Why don't you touch it up a little? Give it glamour. Bleach it. Oh, Al, I, I don't think she'd ever agree to that. She don't have to know. You just slip a couple of jiggers of ammonia in the solution. Oh, oh, no, I couldn't do that. She'd never forgive me. Don't be too sure. Some dames have to be shown. Take my grandmother. Didn't believe in gambling. One night she's having coffee, and instead of lump sugar, somebody slips a pair of dice into her hand. The old girl's never been so happy. You know, for the past ten years, we haven't been able to get her out of Las Vegas. <laughs> so loud. Jane will hear you. Chicken, all I can say is that the girl's future is in your hands. But how do you know Jane would look good as a blonde? We experiment. Hand me that black hairbrush on the dresser. All right, Al. Here. Uh, now I'll go get the ammonia. Good. Yeah, see, they got a little lye around here. We'll mix the lye and the ammonia. <laughs> Must do the trick. Yes, sir, we're going to make this a year Jane will never forget. Here it is, Al. Uh, I put some in the pan. Good. Now I put a little lye in. Mix it up. Now, chicken, watch. The brush is the color of Jane's hair. I lay it in the pan. Now we give it a minute. Oh, Al, I'm worried. Don't be, chicken. Believe me, many a dame faced a dark future until they made their hair see the light. Uh-huh, look at the brush. You see? Hold it. Something's wrong. All the hair fell out. Oh, Al, we couldn't do that to Jane. She'd catch cold. <laughs> Honey, have you got that dress off? What in the world's going on in here? Well, uh... What have the two of you done to my hairbrush? We'll gladly pay for it. Y you see, you uh, uh, want to give it as a Christmas present. Christmas present? Yeah, uh, got a friend, uh, a midget Indian. Want to give him a paddle. <laughs> what are you two trying to do? Irma, why are you fooling around with the ammonia? Well, um, I'm lightheaded, and Al thought you... That's all I want to hear, Irma Peterson? How could you even think of a thing like that? Why, I wouldn't let you touch my hair now for all the New Year's dates in the world. Oh, now, take it easy, Jane. We well... were just experimenting. Give Irma another chance. Not on your life. I'll stay home before I do that. Oh, Jane, please. It would just make me miserable having you here with me. I mean, uh... <laughs> Well, just forget it, Irma. I'll just tell Richard that he called me too late. Oh, no, Jane. Uh, you can still get your hair done. On New Year's Eve? By whom? My girlfriend, Amber Lipscott. Her. Oh, please, Irma. Oh, I know you don't like her, but, but Amber is a licensed <coughs> beauty operator, and she'd be glad to come over and do it for you. But I can't stand her. She walks around in her bare feet. Well, what do you care, Jane? She only puts her hands in your hair. <laughs> I'll call it. Oh. I, I got a feeling this is going to be worse. Irma? Uh, hello, Amber. Uh, this is Irma. Oh, Happy New Year to you, too. Uh, what are you doing, Amber? Throwing out your mistletoe? Well, better luck next year. <laughs> uh, Amber, would you please come over and do Jane's hair? She's got a date. What? Where does she buy her mistletoe? Oh, she'll tell you when you get here. Oh, please hurry, Amber. Her date will be here soon. Goodbye. <laughs> She's coming right over, Jane, and I hope you're not mad at me anymore. No, no, that's all right, honey. It's just that I'm so excited, you know. Well, I guess I'll take a fast shower while I'm waiting for Amber. Excuse me, will you? Sure, Jane. Chicken, uh, this uh, Amber Lipscott, does she know her stuff? Well, Al, you've seen her. Yeah, what about her? Well, she's a wonderful beautician. She even works on herself. She does. Huh? You know, I think before this evening is over, we'll go back to ammonia. And now Susie Swan sings to us. Listen. My advice says Susie, you like this brand new kind of lather, so be choosy. Swan gives you beauty lather, rich as cream. Your skin stays soft as any dream. And fresh as dew, I swan, do you? 
says Susie. Well, I know you ladies agree with Susie Swan that the soap for your baths is something to be choosy about. Yes, that's why so many lovely women choose Swan Soap. Because White Floating Swan gives you a wonderful new kind of beauty lather. A new kind of beauty lather to make your baths delightful always. You see, Swan's new kind of beauty lather is extra rich, extra creamy. So when you smooth it on, you can fairly feel how gently Swan cleanses your skin. And when you step from the tub, you'll see by the glow of your skin how thoroughly Swan's beauty lather cleanses too. And you'll notice still another beauty gift from Swan. That's the way Swan leaves your skin after your bath. Satin smooth and fresh, not all dry and over-soaked, because Swan rinses away so completely. So next time, let Swan's wonderful new kind of beauty lather give you a really delightful beauty bath. but believe me, I'm not singing. Why not? Because it's 9 o'clock, which it'll be here any minute, and I look like a savage. Amber hasn't arrived yet to do my hair, and I still don't know what sort of a job Irma's done on my dress, and the minutes keep rushing past like mad. Oh, what a girl will go through for a little thing like landing a husband. Irma? Uh, yes, Jane? Sweetie, will you iron that hem that you fixed? I already have. Come in. Oh, hello, Amber. Hello, dearie. Oh, it's so sweet of you to come over and do Jane's hair on New Year's Eve. Listen, dearie, it's just a favor to you. For your roommate, I wouldn't lift a finger. Burns me up that girls like her get all the dates. Oh, I have a date, too. Uh, where? Under the newspapers on the sofa. Uh, Al, get up. Huh? Huh? Oh, oh. oh, it's you, Amber. Thought I had a nightmare. <laughs> Hello, Al. What's new with the man on the street? Not much. How things at Stillman's gym? <laughs> oh, Emma, he's a card. Why don't you ask for a new deal? Earl, <laughs> for goodness sakes, honey, it's getting late. Is Amber here yet? Uh, she just got here. Oh, I'll be right out. Say, Emma, is your roommate one of them talky types? You know, the kind that bends your ear when you wake on them? Well, I don't think so. I hope not. Because when they talk, I have to answer them. And I keep the bobby pins in my mouth. And you don't know how many times I'm almost choked to death. I prefer the silent type like myself. People who never open their mouths unless they have something to say. Now, let me see. My curl is my comb. Rinse. Oh, no, I forgot the hair lacquer. Say, Al, would you run out and buy me some hair lacquer? You mean it's my turn to talk? <laughs> oh, Al, please. Okay, chicken. Uh, where do I get it? Uh, the drugstore has everything. And while you're there, get some Tootsie Rolls. I always use them when I run out of curlers. Be right back. Be right back. <laughs> now, let's see. I think I'll have a sit here. I'm going to get a towel. No, no, it's all right. I have one with me. Hello, Amber. Gee, you'll never know how much I appreciate this. I'd do anything for Amos. Uh, Just sit down, Jerry. Okay. Now, what style do you like? Well, I, I generally wear it in a side sweep. You're crazy. But I like it. Oh, well, I guess when a person gets to be 30, they want to look sophisticated. <laughs> I'm 23. You kidding? Now, just a minute. Uh, uh, just a minute. Keep your head still, dearie. You ain't bobbing for apples. <laughs> Say, when did you tint your hair last? That's the natural color. Uh, go on, lie to yourself if it'll make you happy. <laughs> Amber, make Jane extra pretty tonight. Uh, she's going with her special boyfriend... You know, as the French say, her patty de foie gras? <laughs> Just leave it to me. Now, what shall we talk about, girls? What's the difference what we start with? <laughs> we always come back to men. <laughs> Personally, I despise them. Now, don't get me wrong. Men have been very nice to me. I don't know where I could have spent my money and had a better time. <laughs> Amber, the, the wave set's kind of running into my ears. Oh, well, don't worry, dearie. I'm not charging you extra. <laughs> oh, believe me, girls, this would be a better world without men. Oh, Amber, you're just bitter. Look at my Al. I don't know any girl who could take the place of him. You'll find out differently. <laughs> believe me, dearie, when I hear what goes on, I don't ever want to get married. Have you ever been asked? That's beside the point. <laughs> well, Amber, you never know. One day you've got nothing. The next day you've found one some, someone like Al. That's really making time stand still. <laughs> uh, don't mind Jane, Amber. She doesn't think much of Al. But I know him better. I can count on him in rain, sleet, slush, and snow. 
So why do you need a fella? You can get the same results with a four-way cold tablet. <laughs> no, girls, it's not my nature to chase men. I got three phones, and I send out blotters. I figure that's enough. <laughs> Have you tried skywriting? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Amber, hand me the bobby pin. Amber, listen, will you please hurry? It's almost ten. I haven't even tried my dress on. Don't worry, don't worry, dearie. You look gorgeous. Uh, Say, Jane, while we're waiting for Al and the hair lacquer... Uh, excuse I... me just a minute. Uh, come in! It's me again. Janie, your hair looks positively beautiful. Thank you. Yes, my girlfriend Amber did it for... Uh, Professor, you've met Amber. Oh, yes. Uh, are you doing anything this evening, Professor? No. Well, uh, Amber isn't doing anything, are you, Amber? <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, Happy New Year, everybody. Goodbye. I think, he... I think he likes you, Amber, because every time he looks at you, he closes his eyes. Come in. Well, got the lacquer. Oh, swell, Al. Will you pour a little in a pan? Uh, there's one in the kitchen, honey. Right, chicken. See, girls, isn't he wonderful? I admit he isn't handsome, and he's kind of short, and he has no job or any money but I love what's left of him. <laughs> I'd like to see the pot that got away. <laughs> Al, will you hurry up with that hair lacquer? I ought to be dressed by now. Coming up. Here you are, girls. Oh, Jane, your hair looks terrific. Thanks. Just wait till I get this lacquer on. It'll keep in place. Now hold still, dearie, while I pour, it, pour some on. I'll loosen the ends just before you're ready to go. Oh, swell. Amber, you know it looks beautiful. I'd like to pay you a little extra for coming here and working on New Year's Eve. Oh, I wouldn't take money from any friend of Amos, dearie. Because if you want to, if any girls at the party say it's pretty, you can tell them I'm available for appointments. Oh, I certainly will. Yeah, and if any fellas say it's pretty, you can tell them I'm available. <laughs> Now, be careful, dearie. Don't mess the lacquer putting your dress on. No, I won't, Amber. I won't. Irma, right, hand me the dress, will you? I'll just get in back of this screen. I want you all to know how grateful I am for what you've done. You, Amber, for doing my hair, and Irma for fixing my dress, and Al for getting the lacquer. I'm just the luckiest girl that... Irma. What's the matter, Jane? This dress. What did you do? I lowered the hem. But Irma, white thread on a black dress? <laughs> well, Jane, we don't have any black thread, and you're in such a hurry, and I figured you could match it by wearing white gloves. Oh. <laughs> oh, Irma, why didn't you tell me I can't wear this? I'll have to wear the white one. Do you want me to lower the hem? No, we're all out of black thread. <laughs> well, anyway, thank goodness my hair looks pretty good. Amber. Amber. What's eating you now, dearie? My hair. I can't move it. It's hard as a rock. Ah, that's ridiculous. Let me run a comb through it. Yeah. Uh, hand me another comb, Irma. This one won't budge. No. Oh, ow. Oh, Is careful, you... Amber. My, oh. my head. You, you'll pull it off. I mean, you... I can't understand this. Al, what did you buy? Hair lacquer. Are you sure? Look at the can. Jane, I'm an intelligent guy. When I go to the store, I... Holy mackerel. What's the matter, Al? I asked the dame for hair lacquer. She gave me chair lacquer. <laughs> chair lacquer? Oh, well, now what can I do, Amber? How can you get it off? Dearie, I'm a beautician, not a carpenter. <laughs> then there's got to be some way to soften it. Oh, I'll go out of my mind. If I ever put my head on Richard's shoulder, he'd cave in. <laughs> oh, Al. Oh, now, take it easy, Jane. Oh. We were just trying to help oh, you. Oh, trying to help me. Just look at me. A black dress with white thread and a head full of broken combs. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't I learn? Why don't I ever learn the minute you two say you'll help me? I'm just a dead pigeon. <laughs> Richard will be here any minute and I can't go. I can't go. Oh, don't cry, Jane. Well, what do you want me to do? Sing old Lang Syne. <laughs> this is my first New Year's party with Richard, and I can't go. Oh, Irma. <gasps> oh. Hello? Uh, hello, Irma. Is Jane there? Yes, but I, I don't know whether she wants to talk now. She seems a little heavy-hearted in the head. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the phone. Hello, Richard. 
Richard, I don't think I'll be Look, able... Look, Jane, to... I don't know what you're going to say. I'm on my way to pick you up, and I haven't got the nerve to face you, so I called. Jane, I've made a terrible mistake. You're not the only one. What is it, Richard? Well, now, now, please don't be angry. I know this is a fine time to tell you, but the party I'm taking you to is a masquerade. A masquerade? Now, don't be angry, Jane. Look, do you think you can get something unusual in a hurry? <laughs> unusual? Come right over, Richard. Even I don't know what I'm supposed to be. <laughs> oh, kids, I'm going. I- I'm going. Everything's all right. It's a masquerade. Hooray! Happy New Year! Yeah. Oh, Happy New Year, honey. You see, Jane, when Amber and Al and I get together, everything turns out right. The three of us are a perfect couple. <laughs> Irma had a cake of swan soap in her hand, and she kept staring at it and saying, My name is Swan. My name is Swan. Then she'd listen for a minute, and then she'd start all over again. My name is Swan. My name is Swan. Well, I had to know. So I said, Why, Irma? And Irma said, Well, if a parrot can talk, I don't see why the swan can't learn, too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Irma, even if that cake of swan could talk, it would probably tell you what you already know, that white floating swan soap gives you a wonderful new kind of beauty lather, a new kind of beauty lather that's perfect for your bath. Sure, it's perfect the way swan's new kind of beauty lather cleanses, so thoroughly your skin fairly glows. And it's perfect, too, how gentle swan's new kind of lather is. Well, even the most delicate complexions are left soft and smooth. Now, naturally, because swan is mild as fine castiles, And ladies, how perfect you feel after a swan bath. Radiant, relaxed. And your skin doesn't have that feeling of over-soaked dryness. No, not a bit, because swan's wonderful new kind of beauty lather rinses away so completely. So, for your bath, use swan soap. You'll love swan's wonderful new kind of beauty lather. costume, and I went to the masquerade party with Richard, and I had the New Year's Eve of all time. New Year's Day, I spent in the tub getting the lacquer out of my hair. Now, it's just the same as ever. Irma, however, has been pestering me all day with questions about the party. Jane, you didn't tell me what you went as. Well, how could I tell her that with my head as hard as a rock, naturally, I went as my friend Irma. <laughs> My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lieber Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. Frank Bingman speaking. For a gala New Year's cake that'll do you proud, rely on Spry, sensational Spry with Cake Improver. Made the Spry one bowl way, your favorite cake is sure to be lighter, finer, better tasting. Certainly, because Spry is the pure, creamy, all-vegetable shortening with the wonderful cake-making secret that ensures luscious cakes mixed in one-third the usual time. If you like cake and compliments, Spry is for you, because no other type of shortening has Spry's amazing cake improver. That's S-P-R-Y, Spry. Tune in again to my friend Irma next Monday evening at this same time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 